with Sportsbet. Download us. With the Sunday footy show, no doubt the AFL Players Association has become one of the most powerful bodies in Australian sport. And they have an interesting era ahead under a new CEO with a new collective bargaining agreement and plenty of challenges between players and AFL ahead amidst an unprecedented off-season in the AFL landscape. Paul Marsh is the CEO and joins us. Welcome. You've walked into a bit of a baptism of fire, haven't you, in the last couple of months with unprecedented drug issues. We want to start with the Collingwood Footy Club. How concerned are you for the future, of, first of all, of Lockie Keefe and Josh Thomas? Oh, look, well, firstly, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, look, very concerned. I mean, the, the wider code is, is unforgiving, and unfortunately the players have had positive A samples. We're still waiting on the results from the B samples, but um, it's very difficult when you've got a prohibited substance actually in your body um, you know, to, to beat the wider code. So, yeah, very concerned. Do, you, do they now concede that they've done the wrong thing and face long bans? Uh, I think, that, you know, we've obviously been dealing with the players and I should say we're acting for both players on this particular matter. Um, you know, they don't know how this substance got in their body, so you know, that's something that we're, we're trying to work through. We may never know, but, um, you know, I think I'd rather say they're very concerned about where things are at. A, a lot of people would find that hard to believe, Paul, that they don't know how the substance has got in their body. Uh, I don't think that's hard to believe when you understand the code. I mean, there are so many prohibited substances that can come in any sort of form through, you know, things you may take inadvertently. So I don't think that's hard to, to sort of fathom. One of those scenarios could be illicit drugs, though. Is that a scenario that you're still looking into? Oh, we're looking at everything. I mean, I think it's, it's important that we don't sort of um, say that that's where this matter is. Um, it's very important that we say that. But, you know, there's a whole lot of, I guess, scenarios that we're working through at the moment. They've, they seem like they've been treated differently to Ryan Crowley at Fremantle. Now, Ryan trained with Fremantle, had a whole summer, seemingly still part of the fabric of the footy club, as opposed to Lockie and Josh, who don't seem like they're there. All the things we hear are that the club's not talking to them, wasn't allowed to talk to them. Can you, can you clarify this for us? Have they been... Uh, is that your rule? Have you said no-one's allowed to talk to them and get out of the way footy club, or have the footy club let them go? I mean, I think the first thing I'd say is that the two players spoke to the football club before they spoke to us. So, you know, they have spoken to the football club and they'll continue to speak to the football club. I think the timing of this issue and the Crowley issue are probably slightly different um, in that this was right before the start of the season. You know, there were, I guess there was a leak in terms of, you know, the names were out there and what they were going through. So I think circumstances probably dictated that, um, you know, we knew about this issue before we knew about the other one. But why can't the coach or the players continue dialogue with them? And why are they not allowed to train there until the B sample comes, for instance? Oh, I think that's probably a, a matter for the Collingwood Football Club, to be honest. Are you disappointed with that? Can you understand Collingwood's position? They, they from the outside, look like they've drawn a hard line here and said, you're not necessarily welcome here until we resolve this. Um, look, we've been talking to the Collingwood Football Club. There's probably not a lot of point in the guys being down there at the moment. Um, so, you know, they've got a pretty tough time ahead of them. I think their focus is elsewhere and trying to defend this particular matter. So, I come back to that. Have they been treated fairly by Collingwood? Oh, look, I think that's, you know, it's a difficult one. I think that's probably a matter for the Collingwood Football Club. Every club handles these things differently. Um, right now, you know, I'm not sure the players necessarily need to be at the club. Uh, it's interesting, and they've got, obviously, high-profile president Eddie Maguire. He said recently on radio in, an un, in unrelated, well, in partly related issues that the Players Association had too much to say. Let's have a listen to what he had to say. It's not that the Players Association uh, per se, it's the marginalisation of the clubs. You know, clubs aren't party to these things. Anymore. They're, they're our players. I mean, mate, if there's a, the photos in the paper today, I don't see anyone from the Players Association here, right? Our brand, our members, our supporters, absolutely. I haven't spoken to these two blokes at my club. They work for us. And I'm the president of the club, as voted in by 80,000 members. And I can't, I can't get to these blokes at the minute to find out what's going on or the future of the club or burning the AFL season and all the rest of it. And you know what? The best people in the world who are going to work for these blokes are the Collingwood Football Club. Do you agree with that? Well, I think I'd say, as I said before, that the players had spoken to the club at the point those comments were made. So they may not have spoken to Eddie, but they'd certainly spoken to the club. Um, you know, I think our job is to act in the best interests of the players and, you know, this is a really serious matter and sometimes the interests of the players and clubs aren't necessarily aligned and in this particular matter it may not be, you know, that's probably something to ask Collingwood, but from our perspective we're here to help those guys and, you know, I think that's our job and they've come to us and that's what we're doing. Moving along, Eddie was one of many presidents and seemingly most of the administration who expressed some surprise at your own statement that you wanted a seat at the TV rights negotiation and that there's a perception that the players are getting a little bit uh, money hungry in terms of the next deal. How do you respond to that? 
Well, firstly, I'd say we're, we're looking for a fair deal for the players. You know, I think that that's our job. Um, the players contribute uh, a significant amount to this injury. We just saw your, your injury report before we came to me, and you know, you're seeing these serious injuries these guys are going through. So they, they're putting their bodies in the line week after week for the benefit of this industry. Yeah, they get some benefit out of it too, but we're looking for a fair deal. Do you have a fair deal now? Uh, I don't. I think the deal has got some improvement to go, you know, and that's what we'll be focusing on. But back to the broadcast stuff, I think you know, where we sat on this is part of having a fair deal is for the players in the game to actually work in partnership. And if we work together, we believe we can add value to the value of the broadcast deal and we'll all benefit from that. So our position on that was really saying, let's sit down. I'm not saying we want to be in every single discussion with the broadcaster, but let's sit down with them and see whether we can add any value that will then in turn bring value to all of us. You achieved it in cricket. You reformed cricket in your time in terms of the revenue scale around the world. The players have brought you in to get more money for them. Let's, let's cut through it. And part of that is a fixed piece of revenue, which you, I know you philosophically believe in. There doesn't seem to be any way known that the AFL will give you that. Do you think it's in any way a possibility that you can get a fixed percentage of the game's revenue? And are you going to, are you going to push hard for it? And are you prepared to go hard at it? I absolutely think we should, you know, we should be getting it. As I said before, before, we're looking for a fair share of the game's revenues. We know we're going to be responsible. But the players, as I said, they put on the show. They are the product. They are the labour. And it's fair that they're going to be recognised for that. And you know, I think the thing that everyone needs to get their head around here, and this worked particularly well in cricket for us, was... When the players are actually stakeholders, they've got some skin in the game, they will help drive revenue growth, and that's got to be good for everyone. It's a bit different, though. We've got half the clubs who are financially banged up, though, isn't it? Like, you can understand the argument on the other side that clubs have got no money, so how do the players get more money? Oh, I think the, you know, this is an equalisation issue, and that's still an issue in this industry that needs to be um, you know, resolved. I think we've come some way, but there's a long way to go. So, yes, there are some clubs struggling, but on the other hand, there are... Um, the bigger clubs are going particularly well. And if you put all 18 clubs, to, clubs together, um, they're actually profitable. So, you know, we need to continue to look at this industry and how we can better spend our money and how we can better generate the money. Last one on that. As someone new to the game, you look at it, the, the numbers you inherited and you had to answer in a word, are the players paid enough right now? No. How much more do you need? Oh, I don't want to put a, a figure on that yet. I think a lot of this will depend on the next broadcast rights deal. That's very important. And, you know, wherever we get to there, um, you know, we'll then, I guess, get a position together. But, you know, when we compare what AFL players are getting to other sports, cricket, for example, in terms of a share of the revenue, um, the AFL players are quite a bit less. When we compare it to what players are getting in overseas sports, we're miles less. So, you know, we think there's a bit of a way to go. The Essendon stuff was taxing on the industry. It was taxing on the players and everybody. Uh, now Asada, presumably WADA, the AFL, everyone other than you seems to want the results of the tribunal hearings released publicly and anything that goes on from here on end to be on the public record. Why do you think it's not in the player's best interest for that to happen? I don't necessarily think we're saying that. I think that the way this matter has to work is that 34 players, the guy, those guys involved, have to agree to release the results. And if one of them chooses not to, then we can't. So, you know, I mean, these guys have been through an unbelievable amount over the last few years. And if their decision is not to release the results, I think everyone should respect that. Looks like we're going to get a tougher drug code. Do you support that? And do we have a major illicit drug problem among your players in the competition? I'll answer your first question. I think you're jumping um, the gun a bit there. We've agreed to do a review with the AFL on the, the current illicit drugs policy. I think it's really important to say that the players, and this is something they've voluntarily agreed to, um, you know, they led the way in this space. And I know in cricket we actually followed what the AFL did here. So I don't get enough... Um, I don't think they get enough recognition for what they've done there. Um, we've agreed to review it, and you know, if we can make it better, we will. But it's a long way off at the moment. You know, I'm certainly not saying we're, we're changing the code. It's, it's got to be evidence-based. We'll work with experts. We'll work out what we're going to do down the track. Does it have a problem? In a word, no. Um, is that, that's the short answer. The longer answer might. You know, is that a naive, naive view, though, Paul? Like anecdotal evidence is that there's illicit drug problems. Obviously in society, but, but across I answer, the top. I answer that based on when you compare to, to the numbers to what's happening in society, the usage amongst AFL players, there is some. We know that through the testing we do, but it is far less than what you're seeing in society, far less. So do we have a problem? I don't think we do. But should we continue to work on this issue? Of course we should. You've got a big mandate over the next 18 months, no question, into the next deal, and no doubt you're going to be uh, back page news throughout that time. Good luck with the quest, and thanks for coming in and having a can and chat with us on the Sunday footy show. Thanks, Archie. Paul Mars, the CEO of the AFL Players Association. A break. Plenty more AFL coming your way right after this on the Sunday footy show.